Hi guys! So today we have a thread of people's opinions on goblins, like fantasy goblins, and I'm quite partial to a goblin myself. I like goblins. But let me know down below what your thoughts are on goblins, how you perceive them, how what way you like to play them in your own game. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you at the end of the video. You see these little guys thrown into every other campaign as fodder or as minions, but I've always found them neat. Quick to reproduce and capable of doing so with relative ease, orienting themselves around group tactics. Tend to establish groups easily, but those groups can also break apart or reform in a very flexible manner. Small, commonly profiled people who live on the outskirts of human civilization to take advantage of the many benefits that come with being near it, but not subjects within it. So thoroughly pragmatic that legal authority seems as a suggestion or a game of chance. Tends to use broken down equipment, but plenty of makeshift solutions that completely reshape the game. Architecture, wood or mud for convenience. And floors are made with dirt, ash and linseed oil. 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 Here are some examples of encounters I've imagined for them. Parties exploring an abandoned outpost, but encounter a mess hall with a single goblin in it. There are no choke points at the doors, poorly designed, and the goblin inside has a worn crossbow and a table with a large enough hole in it to fire through. If one of the adventurers attempt to charge through, they might slip on the spilled drinks before they can attack the goblin at the end. Goblin is shouting warnings and alarms to others nearby the entire time. Party moving through an arid land as part of a caravan when a volley of flaming arrows comes out of a hill, striking their carriage. Small goblin warriors carrying the scent of camels run through, spook the horses, cut them free and lay down suppressive fire with arrows and dust, possibly sending a few sneaky trips to tie ropes around the feet and legs of vulnerable characters in the chaos, linked to the horse takers, dragging them away from the group while they retreat. Archers dispensering in all directions, saboteurs on the bodies of the kidnapped which are being pulled by the horsemen. I love the idea of making them weak, but terrifying and hard to pin down. Yeah, I've always liked that with goblins. So like they're like slippery wee rats. Yeah, you can't get like, a hold of them. They almost have like a layer of slime on you. Yeah, you can't. I, you just can't hold onto them. Yeah, they have to have that like slippery nature mm -hmm. about them. You know. I really like the Pathfinder goofball goblins, but for my current game, I have Tolkien-esque, always evil goblins that sprout naturally from the ground and can be butchered without much worry. Once dead, they decay like rotting wood and mushrooms grow from their corpses within days or even hours, depending on how much magic radiates from the surroundings. These shrooms can be harvested and be processed into bland but edible food. No, I'm not eating go fucking goblin mushrooms. <laughs> goblin mushrooms? No way. <laughs> not a chance. Unpleasant food and rarely in the exquisite dinners or poison. I couldn't honestly imagine anything, anything worse. worse than eating fucking goblin, goblin mushrooms. mushrooms. <laughs> Big titty sexy monsters. <laughs> TG has convinced me that short stack goblins are a viable addition to most fantasy settings. You know, you know what they look like to me? You know when if you see the pictures of, you know, like the you know the actual dwarfs? Like yeah. you know, the girls that are actually like they're actually like pretty good looking. But oh, they're but they're actual dwarves. Actual dwarves, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That's what they look like to me. Yeah. Honestly, there's no reason for them not to be. Goblins are usually portrayed as evil little fucks, but at the same time, they're also portrayed as clever and adaptable, not to mention their roots as folklore fae. Sure, a goblin tribe sucked up into the big bad evil guy's army is going to be some heel-stabbing, eye-plucking cunts. But say, a tribe scooped up by the growing red light district of a city could easily give some good squeezable smut stacks you can enjoy a night of drinking and gambling with. Or maybe somehow absorbed into your lordling's estate, becoming a nimble and zealous maid force. I don't know how much I want to comment on sexy goblins. Yeah, you know. Although I do like the way he's picking up how clever and adaptable they are, because yeah. I don't think that's explored that much no. with goblins. And to be honest with you, I am very biased. I do love my goblins. I like goblins. I, too. I'm really fond of goblins. So yeah. They're like my go to, like, you know, just really. Shit. I like goblins and kobolds. Yeah, they are fun. In my setting, goblins have little to no access to magic, so they end up being tinkers, kind of similar to gnomes, but. Goblins focus on the destructive nature of things over anything else. Because of this, goblins have gunpowder weapons to protect themselves from other magic-using races. 
that's very much like <laughs> I don't um, I don't like the idea of goblins with guns. <laughs> no, that, to me that's very much like World of Warcraft goblins. They're yeah. very like yeah. engineer focused, if yeah. you know what I mean. I always thought goblins should be evil fae and follow fey rules. That would be a lot more fun to deal with than just the standard midget orc they always turn out to be in games. Bog standard level 1 evil monster with all lowest stats work for video games. But in a tabletop, give them other tricks like invisibility or some minor illusion. And you have something that takes more effort. (laughs) Effort. And a different approach to fight. Give them the iron weakness and immunity to charm. While they like to use some charm tricks of their own. That's really cool, actually. I really yeah. like that. Get, like, leveling them up a bit, because let's be honest, everyone falls short for them. And they can't just be fodder. Yeah. But I like the idea of giving them um, like invisibility tricks yeah. or some minor illusions. I like that. I, th- I think that could be really cool. That could be really cool. You Instead of like, like real perception, what do you hear? I hear giggling and mumbling in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but I love that, though. I love the personality type of goblins. Yeah. You know, the weak fuckers. Just yeah. Like, they just got to You know what they me. remind me of? Um, pixies, in a way. Yeah, well, that's where I imagine, they come from. Yeah, I, the fae. Yeah, they, they do well, have yeah. that. I imagine pixies to be like mm. little goblin fox. Yeah, that's, yeah, I would agree with yeah. that. Honestly, the big issue I have with Pathfinder is the goblins. They seem to want to keep themselves as both level one fodder and want them to integrate them with civilization and proceed to do so in the most ham-fisted way possible. I don't think going from standard monster to civilized people in a decade is either coherent or a good idea. I'd have preferred a full wreck on over what they did. Well, Megan, you know the saying, diversity is our strength and all that. <laughs> if you can get over the natural urge to make anti-Semitic jokes, <laughs> Harry Potter's goblins are a genuinely interesting take. They are the setting's version of dwarfs, but with a far more sinister take. So they got the malice of your traditional goblin archetype, but combine it with actual intelligence and talent. I love the yeah, Harry, the Gringotts that, goblins. They, yeah. That is one of the few things that I will say I do enjoy Harry Potter for. Yeah. Some of the like you know Dementors and stuff like that I did really enjoy, and especially if I be honest with you, the Gringotts the, goblins. Oh, yeah. they were so good, and they made them so wicked. But they were highly intelligent. Oh yeah, as well. they, they were wicked and. What really got Which me, really isn't a thing whenever you think of goblins no, to be intelligent. What got me was goblins were always treated as like second class citizens yeah. in Harry Potter, even though they're far more capable yeah. than and they're and, than and, most. and I'm pretty sure I can't remember now, but was their magic not restricted for some reason? Uh, it was like a take on like a second class maybe, citizen. Yeah. But they were highly I think magical. So. Like, you know, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have given the Harry Potter goblins too much magic because I wouldn't trust them. I do like Warhammer's gobos. Sadistic, insane little bastards. Don't take this out of context. But damn, I want to make steamy love to a big bone short stack goblin lady and watch her belly grow even more as she bears the ungodly fruits of her love. <coughs> Mutated half human, half gobbo children who all have too few or too many chromosomes <laughs> and can't ever hope to function in either goblin nor human society but I want to raise them with the goblin lady of my dreams because I love them unconditionally anyway. I have no words. I just like to think they can look like anything due to the adaptability. Like if you asked me if I thought my goblin paladin that's basically just a short green half elf fighting a horde of feral goblin sayer goblins and their Jewish William Defoe head honcho goblin along with my Chang Bay 50% titty goblin girlfriend was something I'd consider narratively sound? I would absolutely say yes. <laughs> Greenskins, both orcs and goblins, are creations of the god of savagery and brutal war. They basically like Warhammer beast men. Animalistic to the point they can barely be called sentient, and with an instinctive hate of civilization. Hobgoblins are goblins who were made smart and non aggressive after being fey touched. Goblins are the black market underworld light. Not evil enough to be illithid and devil tier. Not civilised enough to be lord or knight tier. Thus they inhabit the dirty bits of society. Chop shops, red light districts, drud dens, etc. The only type of goblin you're built to slay is goblin pussy. Just lie back and become a slave to the greens. (laughs) (laughs) Someone replied to that one saying, yes please, where do I lie? (laughs) 
I think of goblins as basically medieval versions of wandering gypsies. They obviously are hated by each society they migrate to because of stealing and fucking people over. I have never met someone who says, you know what people are dead on? Gypsies, gypsies. I know. No one likes Nobody gypsies. Nobody likes gypsies. No one likes gypsies at all. They don't tend to integrate to society and are quite arrogant towards normies. Tribes. Normies. <laughs> <laughs> Tribes would also break up easily because of fights between families. There's no other way human nations would have these small groups of petty outlaws and murderers within their borders, unless they were some kind of nomadic trader with no country of their own. Now, you know what I really want? I want a gypsy fighting boxing colleague video, but with goblins, (laughs) and I'm talking to you, Junkie Joe Joyce! (laughs) (laughs) You say you're the king of this, the king of that! You're the king of dog shine! Goblins are just dwarves that live closer to the surface. Physically, they look about the same, just with big eyes instead of squinty eyes, and their upper bodies aren't as pronounced. They will sometimes infest a house, doing housework and protecting the place from wraiths if left alone. Their eyesight is better than their cousins below, but they're still nocturnal. A specific kind of madness can sometimes take a hold of the goblin's mind, usually when the house they've attached themselves to falls to ruin. They become neurotically obsessed with the idea that everyone who enters and leaves the ruins takes a piece of the goblin's soul with them. And the only way to get those pieces back is for the goblin to drench their own head in the trespasser's blood. These types are called red capes. That's really good. That is really good. I really really fucking like that. Someone needs some guy to cook the pasta. About that, yeah. I think that would be really cool. I really fucking like that. I have a soft spot for underdogs. So I like the cannon fodder races and don't want to vilify them too much. Neoteny, permanent childlike disposition. They are like feral children or child soldiers. They can be good, but they're not capable of forming orderly societies. Fucking big tits, sexy ass short stacks, both male and females. At least, privately, that's my favourite. Publicly, probably. (laughs) Cheddar goblins. (laughs) Human children overtaken by darkness and twisted into murderous evil monsters. Short stack gobos are for erotic role playing only. Goblins for fighting should look as miserable and weak as possible on their own, but utterly terrifying in large numbers. Kind of like how a roach is puny on its own, but several hundred running and flying at you is nightmare fuel. Oh, Oh. no. Goblins could be a mishmash of various primate species. Aggressively hierarchical. Fuck. Mm. <laughs> but you're not, uh, but no, we can't say it, okay? And capable of ripping off limbs, but also smart enough to arm themselves, form strategies and properly organise. Some can be reasoned with, however. Goblins living in or near population centres are generally less hostile, predominantly living off scraps as opposed to fighting for their food. Some people even use them to run errands and do chores. The idea originally struck me upon seeing a picture of a hairless chimp, but any of all primates will do. Some resemble gorillas, other baboons or lemurs. They don't have a set look and share traits from different species. Hair grows predominantly on the arms, legs and head. Just look at pic related and tell me goblins don't already exist. Yo, yo. I want to see the picture, I'm clicking it. No, no, Jamie, Jamie, pull that up. Pull that up. Oh, Jamie, pull that up. Jamie, Jamie, pull that up. (laughs) Goblins used to literally just be annoying cunts who were there to be booted in the ass to warm you up before fighting their boss. They were primarily goofy dumbass of little note of consequence. It's only in the very recent memory that goblins have taken on anything of a seriously scary and grounded take. That's only something that started with every monster must be scary dictum of 3A. So, boys, I hope you enjoyed that one. There's so many different ways you can go with goblins. There's, they're so yeah, versatile. They're so versatile. They really are. Um, also, by the way, like, you know, if we're going to do some shelling. Um, if we're going to be talking about goblins. If we're going to be talking about goblins. <laughs> Money printer goes whoop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, you guys need to check out. I've got some goblins Fucking up for sale. Gringotts oh yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it matches the theme for the video. But like, you need to check out some of my goblins. They're really cool. I got. Uh, I need to print some more out. Be honest with you, quite a few of them are out of stock. But uh, check them out. Links down below. I think they look really cool. They are. They are really nice. And, uh, of course, definitely let us know what your thoughts are on goblins or how you... Like, what's your... Them, what what's it, you what, 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 your game? What are the, what's your home view about goblins? A lot of people just... They do. They just play them as cannon fodder. But 
They can be used so much more. Way better than that. Yeah, they they really can be. But like, I hope you guys enjoyed this one because like, I enjoyed it. You know, I love my goblins. All right, Um, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.